Hey, what's up guys? Tom Spark again, back with another VPN review. Today we're checking out Perfect Privacy VPN, a VPN that I haven't taken a look at in quite a while. So we're gonna take a look at this VPN in six different categories, that being pricing, application, speeds, reputation, support, and extra services. All right guys, so first things up is the pricing for Perfect Privacy. How does it do in the pricing scheme? Now, it's quite expensive. This is a common complaint seen with this VPN and one that I actually think holds merit. Uh, funny enough though, a lot of VPNs are not that much cheaper. Uh, NordVPN and ExpressVPN respectively are around the same price point, but these VPNs kind of lure you in with really cheap three-year offerings. Now, Perfect Privacy doesn't really do that which is uh, admirable maybe, uh, depending on how you really wanna go for the commitment plans. Now, Perfect Privacy, bottom line is, they're probably the most expensive VPN out there that people actually are using and kinda like. Um, for one month, it's gonna be $12.99. For one year, it's gonna be uh, $120, very pricey. Two years, it's gonna be $215, extremely pricey as well. So, it's not a cheap VPN. Um, that's for certain. You do have your standard payment options. I don't really like how it uses BitPay. I've always kind of had problems working with uh, BitPay. It doesn't really seem to work that good with some Bitcoin wallets. I prefer some other kind of services to use Bitcoin with. One other thing I do kind of want to mention with Perfect Privacy, which is kind of weird, unless you pay for PayPal, it doesn't like kind of count as a recurring subscription, I think. It's a little confusing. There's no way to cancel your subscription in your kind of account panel. Uh, I'm not sure if it really kind of keeps going month after month. What I'm going to do is just pause my credit card because I use a service called privacy.com. Um, not a sponsorship for them or anything like that, but it's a cool service. You could kind of generate digital credit cards. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pause it after this one month. But, you know, looking in the account panel, I couldn't really see a way to pause it, which is uh, kind of weird or cancel it. Like most VPNs, you can cancel your subscription after subscribing. But according to this website, it doesn't really auto bill unless you're using PayPal. Kind of weird. Overall though, guys, I just can't give a perfect privacy really anything at all for the pricing plan. Oh, I do I do find it respectable. If they want to have it expensive and they, they think it's worth it, then you know all the power to them. I do like how they're not pushing people into long subscription plans just to have a you know so for example with NordVPN. Their monthly plan is simply expensive because they want people to go for a three-year plan. Now with Perfect Privacy, they don't necessarily want people to go for the two-year plan either. It's $215, so they're not necessarily steering you down that path. Everything here is expensive. And I guess for some reason I find that a little bit more honest. So for pricing, I'm gonna get a little bit of bonus for that, but still guys, two out of five, two out of five. It's just too expensive um, as a VPN. All right guys, so next up for Perfect Privacy is going to be the application. Now Perfect Privacy admittedly has kind of a weird application. It's very like old school, classic VPN. Now since this VPN has been around for 2008, I wouldn't be surprised to see if this VPN has simply never updated the graphical interface at all. It's very old school, it looks like Windows XP style. Um, but it does have some pretty good security. It's right up along there with stuff like Torvard VPN which is quite good to see. We do see a lot of settings here. We have an option to change um, different encryption settings, which is kind of cool. We have a uh, firewall and DNS settings. Now the firewall in this application is very aggressive. You can make sure you're never leaking anything. It's gonna check you every time to make sure um, if you want to have it connected or what you want to do when you disconnect it's gonna be like are you sure you want to you know change this or that it's 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 out there to protect you that's for sure not only that but we do see a lot of IP configuration and different things you could configure as well as some various cascading options you can look into VPN cascading if you want I even made a video about it it's kind of a way to kind of uh, secure your um, base point even further. A lot of these things are gonna be kind of extra security features that are quite complicated uh, if you look into it, but for someone who really wants to maximize privacy and security with VPN, these could be good features to use. Um, we do see Stealth VPN, which is gonna be helping you get around other kind of firewall restrictions that could be preventing VPN access. And again, we do see some proxy settings, which is very good as well, letting you use proxy settings additionally. And we see that with TorGuard also. Anyways, guys, uh, so what? this is a very good app for security. It does look outdated. I'm not really gonna dock it too much for looking outdated. 
But I do kind of want to mention a couple things that do annoy me with that application. Well, for one, you kind of have to go down into the settings, uh, your taskbar, just to even work with it. You have to connect that way. Um, and it's quite annoying to have to do that. Uh, most VPNs let you change servers and stuff like that within the settings of the VPN interface itself. But with perfect privacy, what you're going to have to do is go into the taskbar and connect that way. It's a little bit annoying. It's a little bit similar to private internet access in that respect. Uh, not a big deal, but definitely something kind of annoys me having to go down there and stuff like that. One thing I do like about this app, however, is that you can show the status of the VPN um, and you can see different uh, metrics on how overloaded every server is or how underloaded it is. You can see the different bandwidth available which is quite cool. Uh, this one reason they might be able to do this uh, is because they do collect some minor forms of bandwidth logs, perhaps just so you can see this information. However, if you don't want any logs, that could be a concern for you. Another thing that docks perfect privacy, in my opinion, is that they don't have an iOS application. I don't know why they have an Android application, Windows, Mac, which is good to see. And these apps are very good with security and they work fine, even though they do look outdated, like I said. But again, no iOS app is kind of a big deal. You can use OpenVPN and connect this VPN through your login credentials and connect to the right servers and stuff like that. But still, I don't know why they don't have an iOS app in 2019. They've been around for 11 years, so they've had plenty of time to do so. Just seems like they don't really care enough to do it, or maybe they're just lazy, I'm not sure. Maybe they don't have enough money for application development. Um, maybe they just don't see it's necessary. Whatever the case though, that is gonna talk on some points because I do think having an iOS app is, is kind of important. Anyways, guys, so for some of those reasons, I'm going to dog privacy a little bit. I do want to say that it is a very good application. It's very secure, among the best in terms of security. But again, some of the interface things are a little bit annoying, and not having an iOS app does dock it. 3.5 out of 5. Perfect Privacy has a very good reputation. They've even been tested in the past with kind of the Dutch government handing over stuff, but proving that they don't collect any logs. Um, that could identify users. Now they do collect minor forms of bandwidth logs, perhaps just so they can use it in their VPN application like I mentioned earlier. But from looking on the internet, I can't really find anything too you know, bad about these guys. Um, they do seem to be a pretty reputable VPN provider. They've been around since 2008. No major scandals with them, so it's a pretty reputable VPN in my opinion. Five out of five. Next up for perfect privacy is going to be speeds. Now speed tests were actually pretty good, which was a little bit surprising for me. Now they do claim that they have good speeds and stuff like that because they are more expensive. You're gonna be getting your money's worth. And we see that this claim with a lot of VPNs like stuff like ExpressVPN or NordVPN, but perfect privacy surprisingly, actually you do seem to be getting your money's worth in, a, in some ways. Uh, so it is going to be $13 a month, but some of the speeds are actually pretty good. Now, the servers are a little bit limited. There's not a ton of servers to pick from, but the servers that I picked from actually did have pretty good speeds. Testing out Los Angeles, I was able to get very good speeds, and even testing out some servers with torrenting. One thing to note, again, is that private, perfect privacy just has some limitations. Uh, that's kind of old school. Uh, they only really work with uh, torrenting if you're going to do it outside the U.S. This is kind of a, something that used to be kind of more of a thing with VPNs, and now more VPNs don't really bother with it. They like kind of torrent anywhere. Uh, but with perfect privacy, you're going gonna to have to use a different server outside the U.S. if you want to torrent. However, surprisingly, I was still getting some pretty good speeds with this. I tested out a U.K. server, and I was downloading four to seven megabytes a second, uh, which is very good. That's probably my second fastest VPN I've ever tested for torrenting. So it could be a good torrent option, even though it does have some limitations on those servers. Additionally, speed tests were pretty good as well. So for speeds, I'm going to give them a 4.5 out of 5. Last up on the list, guys, is going to be the extra services. Now, this is another way that Perfect Privacy really surprised me. They have unlimited simultaneous connections, which you doesn't really seen that often. You do see that with something like VPN.ac, which is a little bit cheaper. So there you go. Um, they do have lots of extra security features to take advantage of. Now, if you're really a security nut, Perfect Privacy could be the VPN for you. All right, guys, so if you're an advanced VPN user, you might like some of these perfect privacy features. Now, TrackStop isn't too unique in that other VPNs also offer um, adware, malware kind of blocking via DNS, but perfect privacy might have the most full-fledged one, which is pretty cool. They also offer neural routing, which is kind of like a multi-hop option. Uh, for connected VPN devices. They also offer multi-hop options for the main VPN application and of course are based in Switzerland if that's something that's important to you. My opinion doesn't really matter. Anyways guys, let's do a brief overview of some of these features and how you could take advantage of them. 
Most of these features are for advanced VPN users, just a small disclaimer. One of the main ideas for neural routing is that it gives you the same multi-hop kind of capability, same kind of torque similarity to any device that connects to uh, perfect privacy on the network. So you could use it with your VPN router, supposedly. Perfect privacy also offers a fairly robust uh, VPN ad blocker. Now this might be the best one yet. It's quite efficient in blocking some of these stuff. So do you not want to go to Facebook? Do you not want to use Google? Do you not want to go to fake news websites? Now for me, I don't know if I find all this completely necessary. I just prefer to use uBlock Origin or something that like that that is pretty reputable on my Chrome browser. But again, it's not super, super unique in that the private internet access, TorGuard, and some other VPNs offer uh, same kind of adware uh, and kind of malware and ad blocking like this, primarily through DNS. So this is probably one of the most robust options out there, which is pretty cool. All right, guys, so what exactly is multi-hopping? Well, I still found that Restore Privacy, which also did a review on this VPN provider, did a pretty good explanation of some of these security features. Now, just a disclaimer, I don't necessarily agree with everything that Sven Taylor does. In fact, that he's just blatantly refused to re <laughs> review some VPNs because they don't agree with his five eyes and 14 eyes kind of propaganda. Not only that, but he also rates ExpressVPN as his number one VPN and a NordVPN up there as well. So as you can tell, this website doesn't get that much credibility in terms of how he ultimately rates and scores his VPNs, but he does have a pretty good understanding of some of these more technical security features. So this is his table and kind of graphic that he uses to explain uh, perfect privacy's kind of multi-hop feature. So basically what you do is you have the internet, you connect to one VPN server, and then it hops to another and to another and to another. And this is ultimately your information here. So you're kind of using a different couple of VPN servers to kind of hide and encrypt your main connection, which is just kind of another way to kind of remain anonymous. Now, is this necessary? Well, it's kind of up to you. How much do you trust your VPN provider? This is a good way to kind of hide your um, main kind of source of information. But keep in mind that since you are connecting to all these different VPN servers through different ways, it is going to kind of impact your speeds. So that's just something to consider when using these security features. Now, it's also kind of makes sense to think that using more and more security is going to impact your speeds. And this is a good example of that. They do also have WireGuard support. So if you're looking to test that, that's also a big plus. Netflix is a little bit problematic. However, we do only see them working with, uh, you know, like one or two servers. Testing them on some U.S. servers wasn't able to get anything working. I did test the Rajavik server, which did seem to be working. I'm probably butchering that pronunciation, but oh well. Um, there you go. So, guys, since we do only have one Netflix server, but we do have a lot of extra security features and unlimited extra simultaneous connections, we're going to give Perfect Privacy a 4.5 out of this category. All right, guys, so what is the final review for Perfect Privacy? It's going to get a 3.67 out of 5. Now, Perfect Privacy really did lose some points for its expensive price point. However, as a very good application, but did miss some points out for not having an iOS application, as well as the client feeling a little bit outdated and a little bit clunky to use. The customer support definitely got docked because there's no live chat option, although they probably do have, you know, decent one day kind of ticket response times reputation for progress privacy however is quite good they have proven they don't really collect logs and i can't find any dirt about them on the internet which is always a good thing speeds for perfect privacy were actually quite good as well ranking number two in my speed test so far for 2019 and finally extra services were also another very good category for perfect privacy it works with netflix on the Rajavik server, and it also has unlimited simultaneous connections. It also got some bonus kind of there for having so many extra features that really go above and beyond, like their specific uh, powered adware blocking services, neural routing, and multi-hop. However, some of these services also can be found with other VPNs, and I think the high asking price is a bit much just for having these features. Especially since a large amount of users won't take advantage of these things. They're all ultimately just for the ultra secure out there they might influence speeds negatively and so on perfect privacy also lost a couple points and maybe the application section for having a limited amount of servers as well as not supporting a lot of servers for torrenting however the servers that i did work for torrenting did get a good boost in the speed category all right guys if you like this video let me know down in the comments down below let me know if you want to see a vpn uh, reviewed in the next video i do have a list of around six or seven that are in the pipeline um, but anyways, guys, let me know if you have any feedback on the channel. And again, thank you for your support. I really appreciate it, guys. This channel is going to blow up. The biggest VPN reviewer on YouTube. Let's go get more VPNs reviewed.